Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends. I'm happy to welcome participants of our Congress. I hope that the discussions we're going to have on these two days can be useful and lightland. You'll be able to discuss new approaches, maybe out-of-the-box solutions to the existing problems and challenges. Since problems we're facing is very difficult. I would like to explain the reasoning behind actions taken by Central Bank and talk about measures we are planning to take in the near future. What are the main goals of the Central Bank? Price stability is number one. In order to achieve this goal, we decided to consistently reduce inflation uh, over the next three years to the level of 4% and keep it at level for long enough to perform structural transformation of our economy and adopt pricing correlation of the economy. So we're reducing inflation and at the same time we're targeting inflation. It is better, if I can put it that way, than reducing inflation only because that creates greater predictability and certainty for economic agents. They're more confident the stability of price dynamics. Our second goal is the strengthening and rehabilitation of banking sector through better regulatory system uh, based on both introduction of international standards and national regulate, regulation, as well as timely and consistent implementation of supervisory measures. Our third goal is prevention of accumulation of systemic risk in the financial sector of overheating and inflation of bubble in certain market segments, for instance, in consumer lending among priority tasks, development of payment system, development of financial markets. And for the central bank, important goal is to become a full-fledged mega regulator. These strategic goals demanded certain fine-tuning in tactics well, in the beginning of the year. So what is different about it? What is particular about this situation? Uh, the first six months was characterized by a number of trends that overlapped, uh, very different trends in their nature, but that in total had very serious impact on the central bank policy, its monetary policy in the first place. Just to list them, I'm referring to the slowdown of economic growth, nervousness among global investors that are still awaiting normalization of monetary policy in developed countries, as well as growing tensions in geopolitical arena. So the first trend, slowdown of growth this year, we expect the growth at 0.4%. According to us in Central Bank, we believe that the slowdown is happening uh, due to the domestic internal and not outside uh, causes. First of all, investment rate is going down and investment is now in the red since the second quarter last year. and. The second reason is low management quality, therefore uh, the efficiency of labor is stagnating. Uh, the long-term demographic trend, uh, the population, uh, the workforce is reducing by about 570,000 people per annum since the year 2006. That makes growth recovery based on additional labor force impossible. Uh, raising efficiency and productivity of labor is the only way to boost growth. Investment and improving a, a quality of management is a critical factor of growth. What would that mean for central bank? First and foremost, that injection of money, monetary encouragement without adequate response, without boosting demand, without structural institutional measures that would motivate private investors to invent in the, invest in the production, to invest efficiently, will result in additional inflationary risks. 
and growing probability of the negative scenario, stagnation of production against the backdrop of high inflation. Another important uh, consequence for the monetary policy of such a slowdown would be understanding the need to find solution to the problem of loan money in the economy and the readiness financial sector to provide long-term funding uh, as the demand for investment loans catches up. I would like to make a footnote here. We believe that the demand, solvent demand for investment loans is very low. Uh, some are willing, but few are able. Uh, if we look at uh, the solvent from the financial point of view investment projects. And this financial insolvency of any project is not the result of high interest rate. Uh, if we compare the situation with other emerging countries, uh, the real interest rate in Russia has been very low for many years. Nonetheless, we believe that the demand for the investment loans will be growing as we move along the path of structural reform and banks should be prepared, should find solution to the growing deviation between maturity loans for passes and liabilities. Second factor, in addition to the domestic slowdown factors of economic growth, the central bank policy is still influenced by uh, the fact that global investors are waiting for the exit from QEs and exits from accommodative uh, monetary policy of advanced economies. Uh, so we see growing fears and then attempts to encourage themselves against statements made by leading central banks, the flows of international capital that are no longer linked to uh, economic fundamentals in different countries are becoming more volatile than usual. And this volatile will obviously be growing. Uh, low volatility of the past two months of financial markets is alarming to many analysts because it is very likely to start soaring at some point. Uh, this could be a lull before the storm. This year will mark six years since uh, countries, issuers of reserves currencies entered into accommodative monetary policy. Today, the policy is still continues, although both the US and Great Britain are talking about possible exit in the years to come. That said, in Europe and Japan, we see that the policy is only expanding six years is long enough to take stock of intermediary results. Accommodative monetary policy helped to keep economies afloat, but it also gave governments uh, some breathing space and an opportunity not to rush into difficult structural reform. As a result, now even before crisis, we're seeing accumulating debt, including in corporate sector of developing economies. The bubbles are starting to sh shape on the financial markets in the same areas where back in 2007 they provoked crisis. We're seeing destabilization of financial situation in emerging markets, which is explained by high volatility of capital flows. What did not happen is uh, growth of investment in real sector or structural change in economy. That means accommodative monetary policy, if it's not accompanied by structural reform, reproduces conditions and risks pertinent to previous crises and does not result in the establishment of a new economic model. That's an important lesson to learn for a country. We should take it on board when formulating strategy of central bank and finding balance between our priorities, which is reducing inflation, financial stability, as well as economic growth. We've seen examples in our history of from mid-2000 when massive inflow of cheap capital uh, did not boost investment, or did not contribute to the creation or modernization of industrial capacity, but rather uh, gave boost to mergers and acquisitions as well. Companies to increase their trade burden without increase in competitiveness, which still slows down our economy. Inflow of capital in our country 
and fluctuations in our view are not a structural threat. For us, more important factor is despite accommodative monetary policy, main trading partners of Russia still grow very slow. Uh, the forecast of growth. The growth forecast for the European Union countries for 2014 is 1.2 percent. For the next year, it's 1.5 percent. Another concern is the slowing <coughs> grown in China, which in this year will amount to 7.5 percent, and next year 7.3 percent. Uh, fragile growth in the eurozone, coupled with uh, a insufficient diversification of Russian exports, means that even though the current account balance remains positive, the uh, trade balance is has already gone two times last year and will continue is likely to continue to go down this means that long-term stabilization and uh, exchange rate stability is only possible if capital outflow is reduced whereas the capital outflow has a largely autonomous character and uh, is caused not by the balancing of uh, uh, payment uh, um, uh, account uh, um, in a situation of uh, where regular uh, currency interventions are no longer made, as, is, as it happens uh, in many countries with floating rates, it is mainly caused uh, by investors searching for a more favorable business climate. According to central bank estimates, uh, in the first quarter of uh, this year, most of the capital influx uh, uh, was caused by uh, foreign currency conversion of savings, and these uh, uh, levels will remain very high. Uh, the third factor that has impacted the central bank policy is the geopolitical situation that has created a significant pressure on the ruble exchange rate, as well as a steep growth in inflationary and devaluation expectations. Uh, this has led to a situation where, for the central bank, uh, the focus has become uh, to maintain financial stability. Um, without renouncing the strategy of making a transition to inflationary targeting, we decided to adapt our policy to the increased uncertainty as well as to the increased uh, destabilization threats in the foreign uh, currency market. Uh, the Bank of Russia has um, worked in three directions. We have uh, tightened our foreign currency policy. Uh, increasing by almost five times the accumulated uh, interventions. This was necessary in order to prevent destabilization in the currency market and to prevent mass conversion of uh, uh, citizen savings into foreign currencies, uh, including cash, in order to prevent uh, the inflationary spirals. Uh, the interest rates have been increased by um, a total of two percentage points, and finally, in order to prevent the crisis of liquidity and to maintain control over market interest rates, we have uh, increased uh, our uh, total lending by about one billion rubles, um, in contrast to the to last year's forecasts. Notably, we have been working continuously to increase the range of possible collaterals, uh, which is usually a concern for our banks. Because in this situation, the banks uh, are facing a gap in terms of uh, maturity terms uh, between uh, assets and liabilities, we have uh, lengthened the liquidity terms. Uh, uh, the, the, we have lengthened the uh, periods of time under which liquidity can be provided against uh, non-market uh, assets. Currently, the situation has largely stabilized. Uh, uh, there are no significant threats to financial stability. The uh, ruble has been strengthened, uh, and uh, it is now in a zone that does not require interventions from the Bank of Russia. R currently, the ruble is uh, one of the leaders in terms of its strengthening trends among the emerging markets' currency, uh, emerging markets currencies. Uh, the interest of investors to Russian assets has uh, been regained. Um, securities. Uh, have been growing, and we're now back to the January levels. What we're really concerned about is the annual inflation. It continues to grow. The latest figure we have is 6.76%. However, weekly inflation has demonstrated a stabilization and a certain decline. In these conditions, for us, it is crucial to maintain macroeconomic and financial stability and to complement that with uh, a structural reform agenda that has been known for some time already. However, currently we are seeing more 
proposals to make the monetary policy more accommodative. Uh, some direct and indirect uh, suggestions have been put on the table to effectively um, uh, begin uh, uh, to finance, the, to, to, to fill the budget by printing money uh, in order to make up for the debts accumulated by enterprises. This is, uh, in our opinion, is unacceptable. Uh, it will throw back our monetary policy several years. Uh, for us, uh, stabilization of inflation in the middle, medium term should be at a level of 4% annually. This should become a basis for um, establishing long money institutions uh, to, for strengthening the control of financial stability and increasing the stability of the banking system in general. I would like to now make a transition to another subject, which is a great concern for us as well. This has to do with uh, uh, the policy towards uh, increasing the health of the banking sector. And this is related to a number of uh, difficult and sometimes painful decisions that had to be made. A lot of questions are being asked uh, in that regard. Why so many revocation of licenses instead of crisis management? Why are we not taking into account uh, the consequences uh, of uh, funds being transferred from smaller regional banks to larger banks? Uh, and what about the level of trust uh, on, beha on, on the part of the citizens? Could we, do, uh, could we be more preventative uh, rather than waiting for liquidation? Of course, these questions are valid, but before I address them, I would like to stress that this work is unfortunately inevitable. We have to uh, clear the backlog of problems here, otherwise the banking sector will not be resilient enough to external shocks, we will not be able to uh, ensure sustainable financing of the needs in the economy, we will not be able to protect the rights of uh, the cost banking customers, and that effort cannot be simply measured um, using the criterion of how many licenses have been revoked. According to our estimates, uh, the banking sector is becoming healthier, having lost uh, um, outright weak uh, and uh, or cri sometimes criminal uh, players uh, when there are no financial bubbles. Uh, and an illustration of that trend and the testimony to the adequacy of the bank's responses uh, is the reduction in the number of doubtful transactions uh, that are being performed through bank's cha channels as well as the an over 20 uh, a growth of over 20 percent uh, in loans. So stress testing, despite the increased uncertainties and risks uh, that I have already mentioned, also demonstrates the health of the banking system. The health of the banking system is also evidenced uh, by the fact that it is now prepared uh, to introduce Basel III into their practice. A few figures for me. In 2013, the Bank of Russia revoked uh, 30 lending institutions' licenses in the first six months of this year. Another 38 uh, licenses were revoked. What are the, mm, uh, these lending institutions? These are mainly banks uh, whose business is mainly based on uh, servicing the shadow or criminal economy, as well as banks uh, that uh, are going through very fun difficult financial uh, times financially and that are not able to redress the situation. What about the revocation process itself before a license is, re uh, re uh, before a license is revoked? Uh, several options are considered. Three conditions have to be met to revoke. Uh, the, if a bank is uh, systemically important and the impacts of its liquidation will go beyond uh, the mere footprint of this bank and may undermine the regional economy or a local economy. Uh, this doesn't mean that the systemically important banks are absolved completely. We want them to exercise a prudent policy, avoiding any risks to their customers' money. For that reason, the central bank um, created a special oversight structure within its uh, hierarchy to exercise oversight over systemically important lending institutions. The second condition under sanation, uh, it has to be economically justified. 
the amount of resources allocated for this exercise should be comparable with the amount of insured deposits. Uh, if that is not met, we try to save the bank. Uh, the decision to um, liquidate uh, without uh, an economic justification may create false incentives uh, for the owners who will be uh, in a good position to withdraw their assets elsewhere um, pending crisis management. This may completely undermine uh, um, market discipline, uh, stimulate uh, unfair competition in the, in the market for banking services. And the third precondition, uh, the bank's business model should not be criminalized. The bank should not be involved in servicing any criminal economic activities. If those conditions are met, then we go ahead with this sanation measure. What about the redistribution of customers towards uh, larger banks? And uh, isn't that policy eroding uh, the trust in banks? Yes, there, there has been some redistribution of customers towards larger banks, although the magnitude of that trend is not as high as some people believe. And we also believe that this is reversible. For us, we are concerned about this redistribution. Therefore, we believe that uh, the health of a bank uh, and the size of a bank are not necessarily correlated. Some small banks to medium-sized banks are quite stable and safe. Uh, they properly manage the funds, the money of their customers, and they are operating very soundly in this changing environment. Sometimes they are more flexible. They are more familiar with the small and medium-sized enterprises in their regions. Therefore, we are highly interested in seeing them develop and participate in fair competition. We expect that this uh, reverse redistribution of all customers will happen, and it is already happening. As the banking sector becomes healthier, customers will come back to the smaller banks. As far as trust and confidence in the banking system is concerned, uh, we are focused on increasing the strategic uh, strategically the level of that confidence. Sometimes uh, trust is based on ignorance, and that is uh, fraught with significant losses in the long term. Therefore, we see it as our task uh, uh, to put an end to certain practices whereby banks disguise uh, uh, their reporting, and uh, sometimes the owners will uh, will withdraw their assets from these lending institutions uh, uh, using various subsidiary companies. Uh, the central bank, uh, as, is in, as, as part of our mission to prevent these, we have a number of questions to answer here. We need to increase the responsibility and liability of uh, owners and managers of banks for their actions. Uh, the Bank of Russia should be doing more education on these subjects. Some answers to these questions have already been found, uh, some are yet to be found. But most importantly, uh, this uh, a policy towards making the sector healthier has no alternative. At the same time, part of our uh, work is to help increase the stability of the banking sector to protect the interests of uh, creditors as well as of customers. Uh, overall, this regulation and oversight work is going to continue. There is still a lot of work ahead. I would now like to list several priorities of the Bank of Russia in uh, that area for the short term. Number one is to prevent uh, large-scale fraud as well as presentation of uh, mm, inaccurate financial reporting by banks. We hope that uh, a law introducing uh, criminal liability for uh, improper reporting will be introduced soon, and we will continue to strengthen our cooperation with the law enforcement on that re uh, regard. Uh, we also want to limit the risks uh, that arise from the still widespread practice of uh, banks crediting lending to their own uh, people. We plan a regulation to come out that uh, will uh, uh, enable us uh, uh, to establish uh, uh, whatever connections there may exist between uh, a customer and the lending organization. There will be certain restrictions placed on uh, these uh, um, connections. The third priority is to continue combating uh, capital outflow from the banking system through uh, 
um, fly-by-night uh, uh, companies. Uh, and uh, this also involves uh, uh, strengthening the reserves uh, with respect to all the, uh, the, the entire portfolio of investments. Uh, fourthly, we aim to create a level playing field in lending. We expect the lawmakers to make a decision on differentiating payments for uh, lending organizations depending on the, their level of risk. Number five, we need to increase uh, uh, the uh, stability of banks uh, in the face of liquidity crises. The Bas Basel regulations will uh, cover some of the largest banks. There will be contract liquidity lines. Uh, consolidated oversight will also be introduced. Uh, uh, there will be sanctions for failure to implement prudential measures. Uh, Risk-oriented oversight approaches will be introduced. Uh, protection of uh, uh, depositors' rights uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, combating urgering practices uh, by um, uh, imposing restrictions on uh, interest rates. Risk management in banks, the IRB approach, which is part of Basel II, will begin to be implemented starting from 2015. Uh, requirements for capital adequacy uh, estimation will also be introduced. And the next, number nine, is to uh, introduce additional requirements for systemically important financial institutions. I have already mentioned that uh, so that you don't think that systemically important financial institutions are um, more protected or less liable. I wouldn't be able to list all the practical measures we're going to implement. I would like to add here that based on our recent experience, we're going to introduce uh, stress, uh, uh, express uh, uh, assessment of banks uh, with respect to uh, hidden deposits and a number of other measures. Overall, we expect that our supervisory practices uh, will become more preventative. However, our oversight experience tells us that uh, it is not only about prevention. Sometimes even treatment doesn't help, and sometimes a surgical treatment is required. And sometimes only surgery can prevent a disease. I have focused uh, in my presentation on these two aspects, uh, the development of the monetary policy as well as uh, banking uh, oversight, because uh, these are the two areas that are generating the most public attention currently. Nevertheless, I would like to say that overall the banking sector is moving forward sustainably, and this is evidenced by the statistics uh, in terms of the growth of assets, uh, growth of lending, uh, lending to the non-financial sector, Capital sufficiency is um, up to scratch. The banks are beginning to adopt uh, more adequate uh, risk assessment uh, um, approaches, and um, overall, they are quite stress resistant. Resistant. Our priority is to refocus the bank's attention towards uh, financing those uh, sectors of the economy that are in the greatest need of uh, investment fund finance right now, but that will require creating a certain set of macroeconomic preconditions. Uh, I hope that in the coming few days you'll have uh, a good opportunity to discuss various aspects of the banking system's development. Uh, I believe generally it is very important to see where the banking business uh, uh, is going these days, and uh, what are the best Russian and international practices, what new technologies can be adopted, how the payment systems can be developed further, and uh, this is very important, as we have seen from some of the recent events. Overall, I do believe that we will be able to have a an interesting, informal discussion, and hopefully this discussion will also generate proposals uh, to increase the effectiveness of the central bank as the regulator, and the banking sector in turn will become more sustainable and will continue to develop even more dynamically. Thank you very much, and I wish you the best of luck at this forum.